Hey guys, how are you doing? In this small video series, we are building something very interesting. We are building a full stack daily calorie tracking application. So we are using React and Bootstrap for front end. We are using Golang and Jin for back end, and we are using MongoDB for our database. And let me give you a quick demo of the whole application. Then we'll do some visual planning and then we'll get started. So like I said, it's a small video series. It'll be about four or five videos. And uh, the main thing is that for React, we'll be using functional components only because the other two full stack Golang and React projects that we've built in the past, the Golang and React chat application and the Golang and React to do application for both of those projects, I was using class based components in the front end. And a lot of you told me that uh, you don't like using class based components and I should be using only functional components. And this is why from this project onwards, we'll only be using functional components. So I hope you like that. And um, I still feel that you should know class based components before you work with functional components in react all right so uh, since i have those two projects and you can learn from those now since from now onwards we can use functional components i don't have any issues with that so let's go through this demo quickly so here what you can do is you have a button track today's calories you click on it you can enter the dish so let's say it is a burger or more specifically it's a veggie burger and ingredients are cauliflower you have broccoli and you have cheese for example calories um 450 and fat is let's say just three grams or something like that and um it's 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 a very good crud application so you can see when you add this entry you can see your um, veggie burger now with calories and fat we can delete any entry that you want you can change the ingredients uh, later on if you wanted to. So let's the change the ingredients of the almond biscotti. You can instead say there are cashews in your almond biscotti, change it. And your almond biscotti, the ingredients get changed completely. You can change the entire entry itself. You don't just have to change the ingredients. You can change the dish. You can say it's uh, not almond biscotti. It's actually almond uh, brittle that I ate. And ingredients were almonds and uh, refined sh sh refined sugar and honey I'm just writing anything that i uh, that comes to my mind calories 300 fat is two so here you can see it changed from almond biscotti to almond brittle now and all the ingredients have also changed so you can change the entry change the ingredients delete the entry you can add new entries so it's awesome right so we have uh we, we have to work with these extra pop-ups that we have so we have one extra pop-up one more extra pop-up here changing order and this pop-up here so three pop-ups one screen and as you can see i'm just using bootstrap uh this the standard bootstrap buttons that you get stand bootstrap uh stuff that you get out here nothing fancy no additional css to keep it light to keep it very simple and to focus on the most important technologies we want to focus on react we want to focus on golang we don't want any extra fluff all right so how are we going to do it we are going to be using react and bootstrap for our front end like i said uh so the react application sends requests to jin our jin router which is basically golang and from golang you have your validator v10 being used which then sends which basically is you know uh, checks for validation and then you uh, sends requests using your mongo driver to mongodb and this is how you uh, the whole flow works now, uh, this is from a tech stack level, and now we'll go one step deeper. This is like a 10,000 feet perspective. You know, we know what's happening here, but we want to go a step deeper in our planning. We want to um, understand how it's going to work from a functional level. Okay. Um, now, this is something that I always recommend if you're starting out with Golang, or even if you uh, you are a very experienced developer. Or if you're a very experienced developer, you already do this. You already do a lot of visual planning, and I don't have to tell you this. But if you're a beginner developer, you want to start thinking like a very senior developer, somebody who has more than eight to ten years of experience. Uh, you want to start thinking of things visually first. You want to start breaking things down to very small bits. Then you want to see how they work together and where all the problems can exist and what all um, use cases or test cases even you want to uh, you know think about or yeah use cases mostly in our case and then you want to write start writing the code right do all the planning beforehand before you write any code as much as possible right so it's a small project so i'll do very basic planning if it was a much bigger project i would have spent days sometimes i spend days just planning everything out in excruciating details before i even write one single line of code okay and that ensures that i don't enter into a lot of uh, you know issues and problems and all of that all right so let's do some basic planning 
In our backend, we'll be having a models folder, a routes folder, and the main.go file. The models folder will have just one file called the entry.go file. It won't have much, it'll just have the struct of the entry that we create. So every single value that we're creating or every single data point that we're creating, that's an entry where you uh, enter the name of the dish and the calories and ingredients. So that's one entry. So we'll have the struct for that uh, in this file. That is it, nothing else. In a routes folder, we have two files. One is the connection.go file which is just going to have some logic for connecting with the database. And entries.go file is going to be an important file because we'll have these six functions and maybe possibly more functions where we'll have, sorry, where we'll be adding a new entry, getting the rest of entries to show there, to display there, getting uh, each entry by ID when we want to change it. And then you have your update entry, if you want to update any entry and then delete any entry and then update the ingredients. So I showed you that button. You can uh, update the ingredients of a particular entry. You can do that out here. Main.go file will just have all the list of all the routes and then we'll be basically sending all the requests to the particular functions, the relevant functions in the entries.go file. So this is our plan. This is our um, at least file level and function level plan, basic level plan, planning has been done. And um, in the next video, we'll get started with writing the actual code. So what we'll be doing is we'll be building the backend first. We'll be building the server side first. And the front end is going to be very straightforward and simple. Just a couple of uh, components and uh, like, you sh like you saw, just about two, three pop-ups, one screen, that is it. Uh, and we're using just really uh, basic bootstrap with React. So thanks a lot, guys. In the next video, uh, we'll start writing the actual code for the backend. Um, I'll see you in the next video. And do subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks a lot for watching. See you. Bye.